All right. Chronicles of Acanus, Forerunners, Chapter 10, The Hunt Begins. The vessel of the Scorpion is in full swing as Light's arsenal prepares themselves for the biggest hunt in Zagata, enjoying meat on sticks, lemon meringue pies, words of hunting wisdom, and strange bardic prizes. The party partook in the festivities as the as the observed as observed by the Golden Retaliants celebrates celebration of the hunt. Leaving Winter behind with her family to allow her some time to resettle herself, the rest of the party signed their names on parchment, received oddly semi-permanent scorpion tattoos, and made plans for an upcoming hunt only two days away. After finishing their fun, the party returned to the Crimson Force Tavern to relax and await the big day of the hunt. And poke Ari about the thing. <laughs> Whereas me as the player wants to run away. Okay, so yes, we uh, we're gonna begin uh, on the next day. So uh, by this time, you guys you guys return to the tavern. You made. Uh, any preparations you wanted to for sleeping, eating, getting dinner, uh, winter, uh, it's up to you whether you return to the tavern to spend the night there or if you spent it with your family. Um, I returned. Okay. Then we will uh, start tonight's episode uh, with the next, with the morning following that. Um, so you guys are all getting up and beginning your breakfast routine by now is kind of it's kind of become a routine you, you've met with Novi has sort of the same orders repeatedly and there's like a, a little table kind of almost reserved for you in the morning time um and so you guys are all kind of uh you're sitting there eating um and if you'd like you can uh, have any discussions uh before we begin and then um and then I, I have a, before we get into that though, I, I do have a choice outside of game for you guys to have. We can either uh, role play this day out and do lots of little things if that's what you guys want to do, or we can skip ahead to the day of the hunt, um, just sort of doing a montage of anything you guys wanted to accomplish in the two days that fall uh, in between. So um, that's up to you. <laughs> Now that you said that, we have to go minute by minute in real time, John. <laughs> a montage is fine with me. You all are welcome. I think me and you would be montaging it anyways, because we're leaving. I believe. I wasn't expecting this today, so I'm, free. I'm forgetful. Okay, so... To order things, let's begin with a breakfast conversation because I think uh, you probably some of you want to bring Winter up to speed on some things and maybe you have some things to discuss. And then after this breakfast conversation, you can let me know what things you wanted to accomplish in the leading up to the day of the hunt. So as you're all sitting uh, at your tables, you each individually have your different preferred beverages and foods. Um, you can let me know if anyone was adventurous and tried the uh, goat ale, uh, fermented goat ale, uh, or if we all stuck to coffee and orange juice or lemon uh, juice, as it seems to be. Uh, go ahead. Winter sticks with her coffee. Um, and for this, we'll just, uh, each of you can just go ahead and take out, uh, say, uh, 10 copper, uh, from your, uh, from your, um, coin purses, uh, to cover the morning's meals. So, uh, with that, you are sitting, rations. or rations, as you're uh, sitting around your table, um, 
you can proceed in any discussions you wanted to have for the morning. Uh, uh, Winter uh, changes her mind and doesn't get anything. Also, I, I, I don't remember what exactly I was thinking from back then, but I was imagining my character probably would have gone out like before sunrise. Uh, for what purpose? Well, I, I remember uh, talking about heading out and scouting out ahead of time. Yeah, I remember something like that, too. And my character is pretty early rise. Uh, okay. Uh, so we'll say that um, you skipped breakfast with them. So you can... Um, let me know, uh, send me a message or something of, of what you kind of intend to do for your scouting trip. All the rest of you um, have your conversation. Curiosity was going to get some fermented goat milk for Rafi since he apparently wanted to try some. <laughs> okay, okay. Winter wrinkles her nose at him. You're really going to get that for him? I guess if he wants to try it, he's welcome to. You're gonna get your cat drunk. I look at Rafi. I do believe it's more of an acquired taste, but um, perhaps he prefers it in some fashion. Well, he's not a normal cat, right? So we can... Hey, if he wants it, he, he can make a somewhat informed choice, unlike a regular cat, so, hey, this will be fun. Rafi is just sitting on the, at the corner of the table and licking his paws and seem to be just kind of uh, paying attention to himself and not much more around him. Uh, Winter turns uh, to the group. So, what did I miss? Well, uh, not much, except that we signed up to uh, participate in the scorpion hunt this year. And you won the bars contest and got that thing. I won. <laughs> I want to figure out what that is. Yes, there was plenty of activities that uh, went on throughout the day, and yes, I did acquire a particular item of uh, random uh, chance, so it seems, and uh, perhaps another time, though, Vinda, will discover its full magical purposes, but not today. Um, do I have to sign up for that scorpion thing, or did you guys sign me up with you? Unfortunately, we, uh, mentioned you, but you still have to go through at least the tattooing. Tattoo? It is an easy event. Do not worry, there's not much pain. Uh, they literally just <laughs> put a stamp on your hand. Not necessarily in the most gentle of fashion, hence... It's not painless, but uh, it is definitely, or would definitely be far, far, uh, far less painful than the actual activity. What he's saying, saying is, is, it's not permanent. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I will now be Ares translator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But uh, there is certain prizes and whatnot uh, associated with it, as well as renown and whatnot. Um, and I will fill her in, fill her in on the details. Uh, I did not get a chance to write down all the details. No. But 
she knows everything Aerie knows, at least as of the prize for the scorpion hunt. Someone want to fill her in a little bit more, as I'm not sure uh, Winter's character knows. Or Winter's player knows. I wish I, I wish to. Winter turns to curiosity. So, any details about what happened? I'm not getting much from Mary. Well, I know that we signed up to kill some scorpions. There's like a certain amount of time and we we're going to go into the desert and whoever get, kills the biggest scorpion wins some sort of prize, I think. I think it's gold. Yeah, I think we win gold. Hey, I'm fine with that. Okay. But it's being hosted by some guild of something or other. They might have more information on things in the town. That's why I'm interested. Uh, the Golden Retaliant. Yeah, that. Oh, okay. It seems pretty simple. I mean, we face scorpions with the caravan, so we just have to go out and find a really big scorpion. Although I do think it is a little bit silly that the acceptance into the guild is so random. I mean, is it really scale who can find the biggest scorpion? It seems more like random chance. You know, I'm not sure you should say that to Gorm. But then there are hunters skilled enough to track down the largest uh, scorpions, but uh, that's where Gorm comes in, at least for us. How would one do that? Is there a locate biggest scorpion spell? If there is, I'm not sure I've heard of it through bardic tales or histories. I'm pretty sure it just has to do with knowing where to look, what, what to look for. And then being able to actually take down the scorpion once you found it. And then we have to eat it. Yeah. You shook your nose at that. It's actually quite tasty. You've had it? They were serving scorpions yesterday, yes. Oh, okay. That and, uh, I, I have had uh, scorpion meat before. It is fairly common here in uh, Kutis. It's been a while since I've had it prepared in my favorite way, but uh, it is one of those things of, uh, it can be quite tasty when prepared, right? Do I even want to ask what your favorite way is? You may try. Um, it's hard to describe because the chef who prepares it that way was quite skilled. But okay. uh, why, why, once, once they're that size, it's basically just meat that's got the that that doesn't have bones inside. It's got the shell outside. Not the greatest meat, but it's meat. I always imagine it comparable to lobster flesh. Uh, 
All right, so as you wrap up your conversation, uh, John, why don't you go ahead and also make a, uh, a perception tracking test? Oh, since perception? You... Okay. Mm-hmm. I've been looking for it. I can't find it in the rules. Yeah, you don't get tracking unless you have the uh, focus in it. So it's just yeah, that's what I'm looking for because I don't know which I don't know which thing to roll. That's how this game works. If you don't have it, you got to roll the other thing. Yeah, that's why it's it's named perception tracking. Tracking is the thing you're trained in, and perception is the poor ability. Oh, I see. It's on your it's on your thing. I didn't think to look there. It's fine. I, I sometimes I have a list of it, everything right there, and I sometimes forget you guys don't see that. Um. Okay. So yeah, you you spend the better part of, of the day trying to to um, gather some intelligence as to where the, the best place to go is. Um, but with your limited experience with this area and you're just very few encounters with scorpions it proves to be a little more difficult than you initially thought you get the idea just out kind of out of looking through uh olav's maps and put piecing together information you've had from when you've encountered them uh that your best bet would be to um move kind of more, more to the the uh uh, northwestern uh, part uh, of Zagata, um, as that is where you there are the more rocky parts, uh, uh, rocky parts of the, of the desert, as well as some softer sand, which you, you recall is where you you would get attacked a little more often, where the sand was a little a little softer, a little easier to maneuver through um, for these creatures. Um. But other than that, you you don't get any like real insights as to where to go beyond sort of a vague direction. Um, as this is what you spent your day doing, is there anything else within within that time period that you wanted to try to accomplish? Uh, Winter goes to uh, sign up for the scorpion hunt. Does anyone go with her? Yes. Oh, curiosity will go. Which means that Harmony's going. Oh, okay. oh everyone follows yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Guide her to the table. Hey, we, well, we, yeah. Um, uh, then we can go to. The festival some more, right? Is still going on. Yeah. Um is there an equivalent to rolling wisdom in this? We're gonna go to the festival. Let's change the festival music. Maybe uh, we'll yeah. Yeah, it would be more uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I think uh I think Brenda might have to roll willpower to see if she tries to go to the piating contest again. <laughs> she needs to redeem herself. She wanted to win. And she might have done better if it wasn't sugar based. Uh-oh, I seem to have lost this song. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm sorry.
I just found a new one. This will work. Okay, that's, that's a pretty high level wall. She manages to resist. Yes! Uh, <laughs> in fact, uh, you guys do return to the festival, um, and uh, Vinda, uh, you are immediately attracted by the scent of lemon pies and the shoutings of "Go, go, go! I got money in the fat one!" Uh, as there, as as the contest is in full swing, uh, it takes all your strength, but you've managed to keep on the path with your party to continue uh, following through with them. Uh, as you... Uh, Wait, can I, I look at her and I say, Don't you want to try winning the pie eating contest again? Here are the cracks for me. So can I. Um... <laughs> the left eye of Vinda is twitching ever so slightly. Yeah, um... They had a, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Don't know what to do. There's always a roll. Again. I think you might be able to win this time now that you know what to expect. <laughs> the dice are saying no. Literally the same roll you gave last time. I'm trying to persuade her to do it. <laughs> well, if that's a difficulty threshold, then he'd be too bad. <laughs> I actually... I went up there. Ah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks really good, and he has a point. You do know what to expect now. Yeah, I, I, I think she's done. She's going for it. <laughs> okay, curiosity goes to cheer her on. <laughs> Okay, Winter, as you're you're moving through, and you've, you've been through most of this part, you spent most of the day here, and you watched, um, you watched some of the things that are going on. Uh, the pie eating contest, um, it was kind of almost directly across from your tent, and so you've seen some of it, but you didn't actually see when Vinda competed. And so you're a little surprised when the, when your small companion starts, uh, rushing her way forward towards... Uh, the pies, which are normal, you know, uh, family-sized pies of lemon meringue uh, goodness. And you've seen plenty of people pass out from sugar rushes, other people return too many times and ended up throwing up in booths not too far away from yours. But for most of the time, you see people kind of enjoying it and betting on, on winners. And you've seen one or two of the same people coming in and going at this location. Um, but you watch as, there, as, as your party all kind of shrugs or, or if you're in curiosity, gleefully march over to the pie-eating uh, area. <laughs> and once again, the, the purple-dressed elf uh, speaks to Vinda uh, very encouragingly. Ah! Welcome back! Welcome back, miss! Always looking for a second turn. Go right up ahead. Go ahead and sign up, dear. And she quickly goes and she signs her name and uh, begins to, and, and is seated in a, um, uh, in the same, in a, in a spot big enough for a normal human, but instead of using the chair, she just sort of stands on the table with a large pie plopped in front of her. Uh, uh, the, rest, the rest of you want to, there is a, um, a seating area, uh, like a mini, uh, Kind of like those, like a benches at a kid's softball game. Just kind of uh, two of them in front of this table. 
Uh, Winter, very fascinated, heads over to the seating area. Can I, can I get any bonus for my friends cheering? Very <laughs> will hit there as well. Crowd bonus. Um... Sure, let me see. How about... Oh, yeah, no, I won't make you roll. Yeah, so you... Uh, how, so there's, what, four of you? Let's. I'll, I'll give it a plus four morale bonus uh, towards her rolls. <laughs> All right. So you are lined up once again, and uh, you hear uh, the, the purple, the tall purple robed elf shouting, "On your mark, get set." Eight. Go ahead and roll for me a uh, uh, Constitution stamina with a plus four. You can do it, Jinda. Uh, go show the pie who's boss. <laughs> I don't think I can manually put in the bonus. Please. Well, we'll just add it in ourselves. All right, with a 13, uh, you, as you're getting into the, you get about halfway through the pie before you, you start to feel that, that same sugary buzz and it, it causes you to, to, to panic a little bit and, but hearing, you hear curiosity out of the, out of the, uh, uh, shouting up from uh, one of the booths and you push through it and you manage to, not as quickly as the first time you did it, but in a pretty, still pretty impressive amount of time for a fairy. Just scoop up and lick up the the entire uh, the entire pie, uh, and uh, uh, very, you know manage to with most of the other contestants uh, win win out with uh, uh, in that first round. Winter, you see now for the first time as you this is the first time you've seen her compete. This tiny fairy has cleaned this dish, which is was the size of the pie you shared with your party only a couple nights ago, where you only had a small, were able to finish a small slice, and she has finished this in, the entire thing of lemon meringue pie. I'm just staring, almost in awe, but kind of shocked as well. <laughs> All right, contestants. Place your bets, uh, place your bets, uh, uh, viewers, viewing compatriots. We're getting ready for our next round. Combatants, get ready. They start putting, like, uh, little glasses of water in front of uh, each of the pie dishes. And then, uh, after about a minute, they, he once again, On your mark! Get set! Eat! Go ahead and make a another test. Pace yourself, dear. Pace yourself. And with and and with uh, Aerith, Aerith's, uh, uh words of encouragement, wisdom, you much quicker, much easier than the last time. Down your second pie, uh, barely, barely even noticing it as it just sort of almost is inhaled by you as how quickly it gets done. You finish before at least two of the, uh, or you finish right before, um, uh, two other people, uh, begin to finish, um, who, picking their faces up out of the pie, you know, smooshed in, in meringue, they nod in, in approval and also slight horror at the fact that this small person is beating them at pie eating. <laughs> Winter's uh. now standing up, like, getting closer, like, is she really eating this? <laughs> uh, well, she's doing better than last time. Let's see how this holds up. Uh. Alright, once again, you are give, given water to clear your palate, and another minute to recover, and another pie is placed in front of you. Uh, 
and you're, you're starting to feel it, and it's got, you know, you can feel it kind of stacking up, um, but you're ready to go for the next round. Okay, so, for this, you need to beat, the, the test is a 15. Go ahead and make it roll. Come on, base. One step at a time, yeah. That, that's rather a steep, uh... <laughs> Difficulties thing there. We have two entire pies in your stomach. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of it. Father. Oh, just under once again. Okay, we'll see if she wins it. Alright, but with your plus four, you tie. So... Uh, so I'm gonna say what happens is as as you uh, finish your pie, or, or you should get ready, you, you, you start to sort of breathe heavy, but you manage to finish it all completely, just barely. As you do, you look up and you see another person has finished their pie the exact same time. Uh, you see that it's um, a human man who's also kind of breathing heavy, and he looks about as uh, the other three co remaining contestants are just passed out, coma, with not even like half their pie finished. Um, he kind of looks at you with there's a little there's a look of sort of like recognition, and that that you guys both finish at the same time. And you hear the rest of you, you hear the announcer say, Well, it looks like we have two winners for this round. It looks like we're going to have to go to the death round. All right, each of you are going to have, we're going to put as many pies in front of you as you can eat. The first person to eat the most amount of pies without passing out is the winner of tonight's competition. Uh... Breathe, Vinda. You've got this. I'll let you roll the dice if you win. Or the die if you win. Okay, yep. Vinda's uh, going for it. Okay. So as you <laughs> as you clean your palate... As breathe. a player! As a player! Ah! You... You get ready and you settle in, and uh, at Aerie sort of very lightly flashes that that shiny box that you found that uh, that you had found uh, earlier that he had won. You use it to focus in, as ten more pies are lined up in front of you and ten in front of him. <laughs> and you both just sort of pant and. Look at each other, knowing what's gonna happen next. And, uh, but your friends cheering you on, continuing to give you that bonus. The human goes to offer you a hand, but then sort of turns it into a finger to sort of shake, uh, before the contest begins. Okay, so how is this going to work now? <laughs> okay, so. You're just going to keep rolling Constitution Stamina. I'm going to keep rolling on my end. The first person to have the highest number wins. What does that even mean? The first person to have the highest number? What? So if I... So I roll, I'm rolling 3d6 with no bonuses. If you beat me, you win the competition. Uh, if we tie, you keep eating. And if I beat you... Okay, so I it's basically opposed, and if it's tied again, we continue. Oh, yes. Boy. So, go ahead and roll your constitution stamina check. And bonus is... Plus four. Uh, any extra from the... the... 
I have many things. Uh, I would say it's what's keeping you eating right now. Mm. <laughs> okay. Having three full pies in your belly. <laughs> okay. Hey, nice. here it. we go. Okay then. <laughs> All right, and with that, Vinda makes it look easier than it actually is, but manages to finish her pie within probably forty seconds before the other guy is is able. And even and and as he he you see, there's a moment where he looks up and sees her finish his pie her pie way before him. He pushes his aside and just face palms his head uh, into the table as he's breathing heavy. But uh, the, the purple robed man, he uh, uh, cups his hand underneath you, Binda, and sort of lifts you up so that the crowd can see you. And he says, We have a winner! A slightly unsteady cheer from Binda. Congratulations, young. He sort of whispers down to you, what's your name? Vinda. Young Vinda, congratulations on winning this year's pie contest. Well, at least this moment's pie contest. Right, folks? We'll be back here in the next ten minutes for another. In the meantime, let's see what Vinda has what has won. And he, he you see he goes into and back behind um his uh, little stage area and re-emerges with a head-sized uh, purple bag and he tells you, go ahead Vinda, reach in and let's see what your prize is. Congratulations. You want a severed head? What? <laughs> ba is the bag is the size of a head. <laughs> uh, Vinda, go ahead and roll a d20. Yes, I know this is a D6 system, but we have all the dice, why not use them? Okay. With your hand, you pull out... Uh... A small figurine. Small in comparison in that it would be compared to other people. For you, it's about life size, uh, figurine. But you're strong enough to kind of uh, you lift it out. It's actually really not that heavy, uh, and it seems to be made of porcelain. And at first, you look at it, and it looks a little bit like a rabbit. But as you stare at it and stare at it, just trying to figure out what it is you won. You swear it looks like it, it's starting to look more and more like a turtle. And as you you hold it up in front of everyone, uh, you see the crowd kind of leans in, and um, uh, the purple elf uh, says, "Ah, very nice prize indeed. Yes, young Vinda has won the porcelain turtle of doubt. Congratulations, Vinda, on your new prize." All right. Ten more minutes, people, and we'll, have, we'll be back for another round. So, Vinda, you have won the Porcelain Turtle of Doubt. Which I don't, okay, have, then. Which I don't have a handout for right now. I will get you one later. But basically what it is, it's actually a porcelain rabbit, but the more you stare at it, it looks more and more like a turtle. Why this does it, no one knows. But it is a rather interesting little tidbit. Is it worth a, uh, is it worth four pies though? Well, that's up to Vendo. I got to eat. I I won. Hey. Vendo also gets <laughs> to roll the die. So. And that. That turtle is probably uh, just uh -huh. as confusing as the math behind the physics of how all that mass and volume fits <laughs> into a space where it should not fit. My stomach it turns it 
instantly into magic or something. I don't know. <laughs> Interdimensional doors, whatnot, fairy dust, something to do with the moon and the stars. <laughs> And probably dragons. Let's be honest. There's probably a dragon some involved somewhere in this. <laughs> uh, fairies do have access to dimensional magic, so who knows? Who knows what's There's going on? There's a black hole involved. You can get far away when she dies. <laughs> of all the things you could have won, I was kind of hoping for something more entertaining, but. <laughs> We'll It'll see probably it. be very intriguing for Binda. Probably. I'm excited I I'm excited to see what, if anything, becomes of it. Okay. So, besides eating an enormous amount of pie, uh, is there anything else you wanted to do to accomplish before you get winter all the way fully established within your little group? There were other games you could play. Ari would produce the die for Vinda to roll, and he's got it sitting in the palm of his hand. Would you like to try it now or later, dear? Now! Uh, well... Actually, I'm not sure I feel too good. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe a little later? I'm gonna bring this into my necklace. Alright, no worries. Just let me know when you're ready. Yep. So I, I bring the little statue thing into the necklace. And as per the magic of your necklace, it um, it shrinks itself down so that when it's actually inside of your necklace, it's actually the proper size uh, to you. And it's a small, little, cute, you swear it's a turtle, almost looks like a rabbit figurine. Is that how it works in the necklace? I thought that was the bag. It works. Once you get it, take it out of the necklace, it'll revert back to its normal size. Ah. But it, it, the necklace makes everything kind of fit within that space. It's Think of it as like the TARDIS. <laughs> it makes everything fairy-sized. So the fairies have TARDIS, which means the fairies are time lords. Oh. <laughs> it would explain a few things, but... <laughs> I mean, the sci-fi part of this world hasn't been created yet, so who knows? Anyway, if there's, is anyone wanted to participate in any other games? Was there anything you wanted to buy or go do before we uh, finish out the day? Um, what, what were some of the other games? Um, as you are looking around and recall, uh, you remember that there was a lemon lemon tossing event in which people were throwing lemons onto spears, uh, uh, or lemons onto like arrows, shafts, and spearing them on. And based on you know how well you did, you would win prizes. Um, the Battle of the Tales is no longer um, being done, as it seems like it was maybe a one-time event or something. Um, uh, there is also, uh, as you've been maneuvering around, you, there's a gecko. There was a gecko racing area where small geckos were being raced, uh, and you would um, you would bet on on the on the winning gecko and either receive money or not based on your bets. Um, there was also a magical duck the king contest, which you're not exactly sure what it's done. And you, some of you, like, have to kind of watch. You see, like, just this, like, pool, which Vinda, you remember, uh, <laughs> went face diving into. Um, with just these, like, almost rubber-looking duckies. And, um, see people would pick up, 
would pick up one and um, react to things that you you couldn't quite tell what they were reacting to, but some of them seemed to be quite happy, and others seemed to have like very visceral, almost like terrified reactions to it. Um, as you get the feeling that this this particular thing, while it looks really kind of unassuming, it's a little bit more than maybe people are bargaining for when they go towards it. I'm confused. And I want to figure out what that's about. So, um, after a couple minutes to uh, settle my stomach, and probably right around when Um, the sugar really kicks in. <laughs> I want to figure out what's, what's, what's going on over there. What, what are they doing? What is that? Zoom. Well, I, there she goes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Winter. Um, we seem to be getting distracted. Do you wish to continue on towards the tent, or do you wish to go satiate curiosity of a little fairy. Um, let's go see. Let, let's, yeah. Alright, then off we go. And they get there and Vid is already chattering a mile a minute at the guy trying to figure out what's is all about, but it's do what what basically. <laughs> all the questions. Uh, yeah, and you come, and this is a different individual, thankfully for yourself, uh, than the one you'd met uh, earlier. Good. You see, <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, probably a good thing. You see, kind of like a sort of absent minded. Um, human looking man with a long uh, black beard as braided uh, as braided all the way down with little silver ties on each end and he's wearing a very elaborate purple hat with a blue feather sticking up from it and his he's got rings decked all over his fingers and as you uh, approach he says ah pay a silver and we and we spin the wheel of chance by picking up one of these illusionary ducks. Wheel of chance? Illusionary ducks? What are you talking about? What does it do? What does it do? Why do you have so many rings? What's going on? What? And it goes on. <laughs> well, I can't really say. That's for fate to decide. All you gotta do is pay a silver and see what fate has in store for you. Hey, huh? Indeed, uh. nothing quite like chance. Uh. And at about that time, Harry would catch up to you. And he, seeing your approach, he says, Ah, pay a silver and see what fate has in store for you, my friends. Harry, Harry, Harry! Yes, dear. What what can I do for you? I, w I want to try the thing. Alright, here you go. You can only do this so many times now, now though, okay? Uh, I do believe you have eight silver left, so eight times maximum, my dear. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sort of out of character. I'm also thinking about uh, <laughs> fate and magic and stuff. AKA, that it has fake magic, I'm wondering how. <laughs> 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 
to Where's do Where does he want to mess with this? Where does he want to mess with this with her fate magic? As you're considering, he looks at Winter. Ah, young lass, are you interested in tempting fate? Winter shakes her head. <laughs> no, no thank you. Ah, suit yourself. But you never know when it may be something good. And, yeah, Vinda, if you want, there's a, uh, Aries holding a silver coin up for you to take if you so want to try it. Yep. All right. Um, one for the little fairy here. He takes it and says, Go ahead. All you have to do is pick up one of the ducks. Okay, and I'm thinking that she'll... I don't know. Should I have her use her ma fake magic? She's got rewrite to be able to re-roll things. That is entirely up to you. I don't even know what the roll is going to be, if any, at this point, though. I don't know what. There, Anna. That's up to you. I mean, if you want to make a roll as a general practitioner of fate magic, I can maybe give you some, a hint or two, but that's mostly you. You gonna go pick up the duck first? Um, that the rewrite goes before uh, whatever thing. Right, you've you've cast that now. Okay, so yeah, I'll go pick up the duck. Okay, roll for me a uh, d one thousand. Uh, did I hear that right? Yes, you yes. did. <laughs> okay. Use those stunt points to uh, remove the cost of the spell. Anyway. You see, Vinda reach over and she picks up one of the ducks floating in the little pool and as soon as she does she plops out into a pool into a little puddle and falls into the water I'm confused. you just see Vinda turn into a pool of water and just falls into the rest of it. because she's hovering she just falls into the rest of the pool The pool? Nope, she's a small puddle of water that fell into it. So she is safe, is she not, sir? Uh, um... I would hate to involve the authorities if she's not safe. What just happened? Um... Let us see what fate has in store. Now, Vinda. As you wrote the, as you rolled the rewrite, you can 
in this instant because you are currently it's a very strange experience you are aware that you're water now uh, but you can't seem to move your arms you can't really you can't really see anything other than what like the water sees you can see uh, the other ducks floating in there but you are aware you're still holding on to that little bit of magic that you cost if you want to use your rewrite you can rewrite um, and re-roll what you which duck you picked um, I, what? <laughs> I, uh, but you have to you have to do this now before because I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a limit on how much time you can rewrite correct yeah. Um, guys! Well, if you want something more interesting, you can roll another d1000. <laughs> oh, okay. Just as you ask this, uh, as concerned, both you and Winter, I mean, Ari, you just saw your friend just melt into water. But I, just as you ask this, then the time seems to reverse itself instantly, and you reform into a pool, into from a pool of water into yourself right before uh, Ari uh, has this conversation. And once again, you are you find yourself reaching towards that same duck, but now you're back, and now time writes itself, and you move over to a different duck, and you pull that one. Now let's see what trouble I've gotten myself into this time. Now we find out whether higher or lower is better. Or if there is any linear better or worse than this. Also possible. Vinda, you pick up the duck, and for a minute, it doesn't seem like anything happens. And you kind of, a little frustrated, you put the duck back down, and you look up at the wall, and as soon as you do, the fireballs just spit out of your face and, <laughs> and impact the wall right in front of you. you. You watch as literally fire just spills out of your friend's face. I fall over into the pool. Ten fireballs. <laughs> just all, all erupt. And, and as Vinda, if Vinda moves her face at all, they, they follow in her direction and seem to just go in random directions. You see people ducking and dodging. Fortunately, they don't hit anyone or anything in particular. But it does kind of, everyone sort of looks around a little bit and, and has a little bit of a start. I quickly back away, very worriedly. Vinda, are you alright? And Ari will move closer. Uh, I, did you hear me say I, I fall over into the pool? Did you stick your face in the pool? Uh, I kind of just start, startled, <laughs> fall over. Alright, as you as you fall for the last bodily into the pool. Back backwards, I guess. As you fall in backwards, the last three fireballs start going upwards and one goes into the sky, never seems to come down, and the last two impact the surface of the water. <laughs> and just sort of send little ripples through it. So, are you entirely certain that this particular g uh, game is safe? It's as safe as fate wishes it to be. If you'd like to go again, it's another silver. Um, how about no? Very well. 
I hope then that you've enjoyed this glimpse into the fates. And he sort of nods and does a half bow. Glare. Tiny... Tiny fairy glare. Come on, Vinda. Tiny the wet fairy. So, let's go, uh... <coughs> sign up. <clears throat> And I have my uh, my cape folded up around my hands to let Vinda dry herself off with, use as a towel. <laughs>